Good morning and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting a little subject that teaches you a little bit more about how to mix colors, particularly secondary colors in watercolor. This is our subject today. It's a Matili Hapopi and our source material is to the side here. And this is going to teach us how to save white paper, how to mix the colors to be the right tone, and how to add a little interest in a subject like this. So let's go out just a little bit so we can look at the drawing that we need for this. We need some brushes, some eight, a flat, a number six would work nicely for this. We need the sponge, the paint, and a little simple drawing. So a simple drawing just takes the subject and simplifies it into a small area with a format around the outside edge. And that format's important because that's going to pop out the white part of the flower. And this is an, another um, possibility for painting in watercolor is saving the white paper. So we're going to do that and learn all about how to do that and how to mix the colors that we need for this subject today. So we're going to start with the background, start with a little bit of ultramarine blue from the palette, plenty of water in there to make it nice and juicy and add just a tiny touch of permanent rose. And that's going to give us a bluish violet just the tiniest touch. Now that's probably a little bit too much, so I'll add a touch more blue back into that to make it more of a blue violet. So to make a violet, we're going to use a red, a cool red that leans towards violet, and a warm blue that leans towards violet. We're going to check the color of that down here against the tape on the paper. And it's just a little bit dark. It's going to dry lighter, but I'm going to add just a tiny touch more water to it so it dries just a little bit lighter than that. Now we're going to use this color to outline the outside edge of the flower by painting around, making a nice loose outside edge here to give us a little freedom and a little interest. Can you see how, how loose and how much water there is in the paint? So it's really flowing and it's not drying too quickly. Watercolor is about water and it's also about paint, but it needs to be fluid. If it's fluid, it'll look really in more interesting on the paper than if your paint is too dry. And so for that reason, it's really important to keep your paints wet, the surface of your paints wet as you dry, as you paint. Very, very important to do that. So I'm just going to paint all the way around the outside of my flower here. A little interesting silhouette. Make that outside edge just a little fluid too, so it has a little freedom and feels a little less tight. Now for this one I'm going to save the buds at the bottom as well, but not necessarily the stems because they're all going to be darker. When I say save I mean paint around. So I'm going to paint around those colors those shapes and those colors and add them in later. So this first wash just determines a dark tone or a darker tone to pop out the white. You really don't need a dark, dark tone to pop out white, just a middle tone will be enough. I'll just give those a shape. Don't worry about the little whites. That's okay to have a few little whites showing in there. They can always be painted down afterwards. Okay, so now we have that. Just going to check the silhouette of this and make sure it's interesting enough. It goes in and out in enough places to make it look flower-like. And now while that's drying down, we can mix up another secondary color. And that secondary color is the color that we need for the center of the flower. So we're looking at several colors. Actually, we're looking at a light orange, a yellow, and a red orange. And so we're going to mix now on the palette a warm yellow, cadmium yellow. And we'll have that all by itself to start with. And then we're going to mix up a little bit of orange by using that same cadmium yellow and a little cadmium red to make an orange. Those colors lean towards each other, so they work really well together. And on the other side of that, I'm going to use 
just a touch. Looks like I got that a little bit muddy, so let's just take that out and remix that. Good idea to make sure your colours are clean. Looks like I got something from the other side of the palette in there, so we'll try that again. There we go. That's much better. Now it's a nice bright yellow orange and the other colour that we're going to need is a red orange. So we'll add just a little bit more red to this one to make it more of a red orange. Okay, and just a tiny little touch of both of those colours that we used for mixing. So a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of yellow is what we'll need for the centre area. Looking at our source material, the light's coming from the left across. And so this is going to be lighter and then it's going to be a little darker as it goes towards the left hand side. So we're going to start off with the yellow in the middle here to make it really light. And then before that has chance to dry, we'll put in the orange. And then a little of the darker orange. And then just a tiny touch of red back here. Give it a little more life and interest. And on the other side, just a little touch of yellow, more yellow in there too, to, for the same reason. So we've got something that goes from warm to cool and from dark to light. Now we can let that dry down just a tiny touch. And while we're doing that, this is dry enough now so we can mix up another secondary colour. So our first secondary colour was purple. Now we have orange. Now we're going to go to green. And the green is going to give us the colour that we need for the buds here. And this is a cool green. And so green depends more on the yellow that you use rather than the blue that you use. And so because of, we want a cool green, I'm going to use a cool yellow. And that's Hansi yellow here. It's like a lemon yellow. I'm going to use a little cool yellow and a little bit of the same blue that we used for the purple, which is ultramarine blue. So it's interesting that we're using a warm blue and a cool yellow to make this green. And that green's pretty close to the green that we're seeing on the subject here. Could be just a tiny touch bluer. There we go. Now we don't want this to be too strong, so we can test that. Initially we want it to be light, and then we'll put a shadow on it afterwards. So I'll add just a tiny bit more water to make that a little bit lighter when it dries. The tape will give you an idea of how light or how dark the colours are. It's a light middle tone. And so when you're working on white paper, it's really hard to assess the tone. So the tape helps you to see that. So I'm just going to put the flat colour in here to start with. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. It can be just a little bit lighter on one side, if you like. So we're going to add a shadow afterwards. Okay, so those are done. Now we're going to go back into the flower with the same colour that we used in the background. We're going to use that colour for the shadows. Let's just check and make sure it's not going to be too dark. It's probably going to be about right for the shadows. So this was ultramarine blue and permanent rose. Okay. Those two colours. In my basic palette, you'll see this. And I'm going to put just a little bit in here and just spread it out a bit between the petals to start to give some shape to the flower. A bit of shape in here next to this area. And I'm using my brush. I'm rinsing my brush and then putting it on the sponge here just to take out the moisture and just using a damp brush to soften those out just a little bit. So they go out into the flower just a little bit more. These so are going to dry a bit lighter. So we want to make sure that we don't put too many of these in because it's a white flower. We want to make it feel as though it's white. We don't want to change that whiteness by using too much purple in here. Just a few touches. Maybe just a little bit there. To give us a feeling of the shape of the flower. I'm not copying every shadow that I see in here. I could, but 
I want something that looks a little bit more um, alive than that, and so I'm not going to put every single shower that I, shadow that I see in there. Just enough to make the flower feel as though it has some dimension and it has a little interest. So just a little interest in this corner might be nice. There we go. So that gives the flower a nice shape, a nice um, interest along the way. Okay, so that's fine for the first layer of that, and we'll come back to that later. Now we're going to make up a darker version of this same purple, ultramarine blue and permanent rose. Painting little subjects like this to get to know your colours is a really good idea. And this is going to be darker than anything else we've done so far, so we'll test that down here. That looks dark enough. Darker than the tape this time. And over here we're going to make our green a little darker too. So to make it darker we add more blue. And that. And just a little bit more yellow. Hansa yellow and ultramarine blue for this one. Okay, I'm going to test that and see if it's darker. That looks like it's a good dark there. And now we can come down and give the the, uh, pot, the buds just a little bit of shadow so they have more dimension. Paint the shadow in on one side to start with. Same light source as the flower. Okay. And then rinse the brush, put it on the sponge and just soften the edge. Okay, so that gives us that shape. Now in the background we want to have all sorts of goodies, so we're going to use um, a green first of all, just a little bit more blue in it, darken it just a wee bit more, and then we're going to use that for the stem. Now the stem always comes from the center of the flower, so we can pull that down from about there. And I'm still using a number eight brush for all of this because it's very pointed, but if your brushes are not so pointed, you want to move to a number six brush for this because it's getting a little, a little um, smaller now. Everything's getting a bit smaller. So we can link one of these onto that stem. And this one can have its own stem separately. We can put just a little bit more of that dark under there too. Wow, we've got it on the brush. And that will give a bit more dimension to those buds. Okay. So now we've got to add interest in the background, so we're going to do something that I call brush calligraphy, which is adding in some little shapes with the brush. And these are the sort of shapes that you might see on the leaves of these flowers. If you look closely, you'll see that they're very loose and very free. And so we can just paint that idea of very loose and very free as a background in here. Okay, so let's take a little green and start with that. And maybe this little bud here has some leaves coming into it. So we can add those in. We can add a few into this one. Try and vary it so they're all a little different. They're going in different directions, they're different sizes. Makes for more interest in the subject when we do that. Maybe there's another stem going up into the background, and perhaps there might be another bud um, up in this corner here somewhere. A shadow. A shadow of a bud. And then that would run down all the way through down to here. So that could have a few leaves later on. And we might want to think about, if you don't want that shadow to show us too much, you can just blot it with a little Kleenex so it disappears and doesn't, isn't quite so strong. We can add another couple of those later if you want to. But I'm going to add some more stems in the purple now. The same purple that we used for the bud. Just a few little suggestions of leaves. So this is background shape. We're making these just a little darker than the background. Not too much, but just enough to make it interesting. 
Let's take that out here and add in a few more of those, this side. And what this does also is to help to pop the flower out and give us some idea of where these flowers might be. The, the um, location and the, and the shapes. And there's a little of that purple on the back of these two to make them just a bit more dimensional. Now I'm going to add a few more down here. Maybe just a few more purple flowers and then we'll go back into the green. So now we're looking to make the green just a little bit lighter, add more water to make that happen. And we're just going to throw in as many of these little ideas of stems as we would like. Just very loosely add in some of these ideas of possibilities that you might see near and around this flower. I want it to feel busy back here. So busy means more marks and that gives us the sort of texture that we're looking for. Now I'm going to go just a little darker with the purple again because I'd really like this um, this stem to show up just a bit more. So I'm going to put a little shadow on the back of it, make it just a little stronger. And I'd like this stem to be a little bit darker than this one, but I'm not painting them all in solid. I'm just giving them a little touch of that dark. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with the green, make it darker. Maybe more of a bluish green this time. Now we're getting really dark now. And we're going to add in just a touch more tone on here, make these stems just a bit longer. Make a few of these flowers in the foreground just a little bit, or these leaves just a little bit stronger, so they start to stand out a bit more. Maybe suggest some more connections behind the flower with a slightly darker tone. Now we're going to take the purple again and I'm just going to take that out because that looks a little bit muddy on this side so let me just take that out and clean it up again. Sometimes with these paints being very close together they get, I touch one on the other and I get a little muddiness there so I don't want that. I want it to be nice and clean, clean bright colour. Okay there's our blue violet again. And this time I'm going to take the violet and I'm going to add it in in a few places just behind the edges and the corners of the flower. Again to give a little background colour and also to pop the flower out just a little bit more. Just in a few places, not too much. It's going to give a little bit more interest on those edges. And we can revisit the center of the flower if you haven't got it quite dark enough, if you're painting this along with me. And now we'll take a look at the um, shadows inside the flower. And I think they could be just a tiny touch darker in a couple of places. So let's just add in a little bit more. That might be a bit too dark. Let's add in just a little bit more. Check the color. That's probably going to be about right. Make sure it's not too dark. Add in just a little bit more dimension in the shadow here. 
And there's a cast shadow in the subject. If you want to add that in, you can. On the side here. It's a little bit of a suggestion of a cast shadow. If you're going to put that in, it's a good idea to add in a touch of the orange to that cast shadow while it's still wet, because that's what would happen in reality. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the orange over here. Clean my brush first. And I'm just going to drop a little of that into that cast shadow. To give it a bit more life and a little more interest, energy. Sometimes you have to go back and revisit colours because they've dried a bit lighter. Hopefully not, but sometimes that's the way it goes. To add in just a touch more of the red in here, because it's dried just a little bit lighter, and just a touch more of the red-orange. And just that little extra bounce of colour is going to make it more interesting. And we can bring a bit, little bit of that orange into the buds down here too, to make that more interesting as well. And there's no reason why you can't put a little of that in the background as well if you want to. So you can add in a few little suggestions of colour back here, just for interest, just to use the same colour in different parts of the painting, which is a good idea. Okay, so I'm thinking just a tiny bit more shadow on that petal, and then we're just about done with this subject. Very, very pale up here, just a little bit more shadow. There we go. Now we can take off the Tape. Take a look at that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little subject. This is a good way to learn how to mix colours. These were secondary colours that we were using today, oranges and purples and greens. And the green on this one was um, Hansa Yellow and Ultramarine Blue. And the orange was cadmium yellow and cadmium red. And the purple was permanent rose and ultramarine blue. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm just going to put just a little bit more of a dark tone on the outside edge of this, just so it pops out. And then I think we'll stop right there. Come and join me in the studio again for another little colour study. I will look forward to seeing you. Bye for now.